Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. This is John with Tommy's Top Picks here to bring you an out-of-sequence market news update because it needs to be timely while I open this box here of Uprising. Uh, this would probably be a worthless box because uh, we're just looking at down markets on a lot of cards. I mean, maybe I grab some, some luck and pull in some cool legendaries and such, but uh, it's, just a, it's just an arbitrary box, so nothing, nothing expected here. Um, but let's talk about the markets a little bit. Uh, some crazy stuff is happening, which is why I'm putting this out when I am. I am doing it as soon as the word has come to me. Uh, some of this is speculative. Some of this is news. Some of this is in headlines. Some of this is uh, just how it is and what's going on. Uh, so clearly there's been some market turmoil at the end of September. It's very normal. October tends to be an upward month in markets, generally speaking. Uh, this is primarily equities, uh, cryptos, etc. cetera. Uh, that does not look like it's going to happen. In fact, the reason I'm putting this out now is because I think uh, some stuff will probably start triggering on Monday. So it might be an opportunity for you to... Uh, you know, take a look at places you can move your, your assets around and, and position yourself to make some money. Uh, obviously, nothing I say here is financial advice. I am sorting some cards. I'm talking to friends online about what's happening in the market and uh, the news and that sort of thing, right? It's just entertainment. Uh, futures are already down 1% to 2%, which is the same move as last week on Friday. So that's, you know... A significant continual downward pressure and this is across multiple markets nasdaq dow etc s p um basically it's looking like what's happening is uh some internal information from the fed has come out uh essentially their inflation measure is already higher than expected for last month so that first first run at the numbers if they finish at the end of the month um so that is really bad considering their continued aggressive uh upward pressure on rates. Uh, the fact that inflation is higher than they were expecting is not good. Um, it's also starting to appear, and this is um, uh, you know, not a huge deal really because it happens all the time, but it's starting to appear that the Fed is beginning to split on what to do about it, that um, there are a couple of different camps on <laughs> what we should do with interest rates going forward, which is not a good sign. Uh, having a strong, decisive, and uh, very easy to interpret Fed is the easiest and best way to keep markets calm and moving in a you know, reasonable direction. Uh, so that is a little concerning because if they get uncertain in a high volatility, high uncertainty time, um, we're going to see real trouble. Um, maybe that's intentional. I don't think so. It just seems like people are not sure what to do. We've talked about that on this channel multiple times, how we will be seeing a new chapter in the textbooks after this. This is an unprecedented economic territory. Uh, no one is certain what to do, and I think the Fed is discovering that what they're doing is not working because um, they should be cooling that inflation, and they are not, um, clearly, if it's continuing to rise despite the efforts they're taking. Uh, so expect that uncertainty added to the market volatility to create uh, some havoc, and I really do expect it to happen, so don't be surprised when it happens. And uh, just uh, be ready, um, maybe have some capital set up on the sides and uh, be ready to aggressively deploy it into downward trends and the like. I think that's a very reasonable strategy and that's what I'll be doing. Um, obviously none of this is financial advice, but this is what I am doing and I figured I'd share that with you. What else should we talk about? Um, I'm going to put these things in the kind of rumor mill category, but it's worth talking about and being aware of um, that there's rumors out there about it. And I'm going to be watching some of this uh, closely, particularly on Monday, to see what happens. Um, so one of the things, and this may be part of what we're seeing in the futures markets, you know, with this downward pressure, general markets downward pressure, and we've been seeing it, obviously, we've talked about it in the cardboard world, um, it's, it's everywhere, and it's, um, it's getting bigger. So I heard some rumblings out of the UK that there were some issues. You have uh, a lot of people blaming it on this, the policy thing, the tax break thing, which I think is a, you know, not a smart policy at this time, but um, also is not going to cause the kind of uh, havoc that I think this will. 
Um, and I think that's really what it's gonna what's gonna play into what we're actually seeing out there. So there's rumblings around the data in the UK, and people are blaming this policy discussion, right, and and the uh, election stuff and all that, right. So I don't think the election stuff is the reason. I think the data is showing something else, and people just pick the easiest thing to point a finger at because that is what people do. Um, so what I think may be tied to it is apparently. Um, and okay, so let's start with the rumor and then I'll tie it all together. Uh, David Taylor of uh, News, I think ABC or something, uh, posts on Twitter today, a uh, credible source tells me a major international investment bank is on the brink. Okay, that is news that shakes markets, right? International investment bank on the brink. That's, that's yeah, that's spicy, right? Um, the news, or I guess the rumor part of it, is that it's probably Credit Suisse, um, and that they, I guess they inherited some positions. I believe this is tied to like that GameStop era stuff, the bad debt and all that that happened. Because um, I don't know how much you guys know. Watch the Netflix special on it. It, it explains it's pretty entertaining. Um, and it explains all the details of the little financial mechanisms that are at play. Um, I found it a little bit basic but i work in this space so i understood a lot of it already um but it's it's a good foundation if you do not understand these markets and what happened around that it's a fascinating fascinating case study of uh basically the future of finance uh, remember back in the the video where we talked about the three pillars of uh society and finance being one of them and you know transitions of the world and all that sort of stuff well that is an example of a transition of finance and communication and combination. What happened there around the GME thing and how social media uh, basically took a major position in changing the way markets behaved uh, so that it ended up costing, I want to say, $60 billion uh, off of a couple of hedge funds. Well, the problem is those hedge funds are tied to the banks, international investment banks, in fact, right? And you got to remember, hedge funds money is, you know, money for pensions. It's money's for, um, you know, like regular people to a degree. But it's so many tiers up that it's combined into this huge factor. Obviously, there's not all the best ethics around everything there. There's all sorts of, you know, dealings and things. That there are reasons to be angry about hedge funds. I think it's taken a little too far. I don't think it's, um, I think there's better ways to handle it than crashing the entire economy. Let's put it that way. Uh, some people don't agree and think that the economy should crash. Let's not talk about that. The point is that some of that um, debt ended up transferred through the hedge funds failing, the debt that was held by the um, banking communities, and then it was picked up ultimately, um, well, it was ultimately the debt that was lent from these international investment banks, right? Because uh, the money that they use kind of as like, call it like a line of credit sort of thing, it's not, but it's it's their liquidity offering or option. Um, it usually covers things like short positions, you know, like the GME short positions. Um, those credit lines are from the banks themselves. So if they default on them, like $60 billion worth uh, for multiple, you know, hedge funds, then it hits someone's books and it hurts them significantly. So an example of this, and a lot of it got unwound, so it, it didn't all hit. It's not like it was the absolute, um, you know, slam of it. It could have been, <laughs> frankly, uh, which is something that the Netflix show talks about. But um, it looks like last week uh, there was, I mean, last year this time there was eight billion in holdings and currently uh this is for client margin uh lines currently there's only 25 million so one year later year over year went from eight billion to 25 million and this is credit suisse um that's insane that is incredibly low uh which means they probably are not able or allowed to handle any more risk on their books because of whatever happened uh, I don't know the exact details of how those assets moved and how it hit this particular bank, but there was some evidence that this was going to hit at some point. Um, they kind of talk about it in GME, uh, in the GME uh, Netflix thing. Um, but that was why people were worried about this behavior, because trapped in a short squeeze of the size that it was, it could literally crash the entire um, financial system. And there was a chance that it was going to do it. And there was even some conversation about it when it was kind of at its peak, uh, you know, craziness. Um, 
I think it was in the 90s, there was another one that did this and it and it caused this massive uh, fluctuation throughout the entire banking industry. And um, I think all the big banks had to come together and buy out this, um, this position. Everyone kind of chipped in so that the whole financial system didn't crash. I think that's how they did it before. So anyways, uh, the GME thing obviously stopped before the short squeeze got too big, very big all the same. Uh, clearly ripple effects are starting to hit someone, I think, assuming that's what this is about. Uh, again, this part's a whole rumor mill, and Credit Suisse seems to be the bank that is hit by it. Now, one of the things that popped up that was most ah, mysterious is that Credit Suisse itself um, <laughs> came out and said our balance sheet is fine. Big banks don't do that. They do. I mean, I've I watch banks a lot, right? I watch the things that people and bankers say, and they don't assure customers about their balance sheet. <laughs> as freaking like ever <laughs> really they don't do that it's just there's not a big reason to do that unless we're in like an 08 crash style thing or something like that's happening right um is this an 08 crash style thing i don't think so uh will this cause some financial hardships and then some contagion i do think so um and this is where i am positioning myself to be able to take advantage of that because i fully expect um the next I don't know. Uh, I think before I was working on 10 months time frame of, of putting money back in, I think it might be accelerated. Uh, so I'm going to be a little more aggressive. Uh, always maintain some cash position so I'll be able to take advantage of any massive drops. But um, I'm going to essentially deploy a little bit more aggressively, uh, assuming we start seeing deeper signals of fast uh, fast fall. And I think the, the pieces are in place because there's quote unquote black swan events, things that cause the drops that end up becoming the V recoveries uh, are usually multitudes. That's why they're unforeseen because it's not a single item that triggered it. It's two or three or four things in collision that end up triggering these things. Um, that's why it's hard to predict because it's part of the chaos of systems that have so many variables. Um, and on top of that, uh, it's it's one of those things where you'll see fingers pointing, you'll see stuff happen that's like, this is the thing, but it's really this combination that we're starting to see right now, like Fed uncertainty, volatility in the markets to the downside in a pretty aggressive way. I mean, a couple points every couple of days, 30% off the top for, was it the S&P, I believe? Um, we're seeing real struggle on the markets uh, and the uncertainty around that is driven by the behavior of the Fed, um, the behavior of the banking industry as a whole and what's happened there. And then of course this this like uh, debt push that's flown through uh, along with, you know, some of the politics along with all the other things. Like it's a, it's a combination factor, right? Um, and so all these uncertainties, including just we've never seen a market like this before, are leading the Fed to act a little bit uncertainly because they don't know, um, because we just don't have the history for it. And some of the things they're doing are starting to hit the markets pretty hard. For example, uh, they've added uh, quantitative tightening, which is all the quantitative easing is being unwound, something like $8.8 trillion is in the process of being unwound and it's going to be removed from their books. Um, usually they reinvest, they roll it, uh, and I think they were slowly removing some over time. Uh, this is uh, this is not what they're doing this time. They're letting it roll off the books. Um, we're going to see some massive impacts from that. It's going to break a lot of stuff out there. Um, and then you throw that in, the unpredictability of that, you throw that in with things like these uncertainties in International Bank, you throw that in with COVID still happening and things being shut down. I think China had a, a lockdown not that long ago, and there's probably another one coming in December if last year was any sign, right? Um, so you have all these little pieces in play that are combining and becoming a, a bit of an issue and uh, triggering triggering these uncertainties and uncertainties cause fear. Fear is going to get your retail, I mean, your non-retail investors uh, to pull into protective positions. There's not great places for protective positions right now, I guess bonds, um, but that's already starting to be impacted by this. Um, I'm just gonna ramble for a minute here. So just chill and sit back. We did not get that much in this box. Cold full common, fine. Um, and then, uh, you know, uncertainty for more and these other factors that are at play, right? 
Uh, so you put all that together, it creates a very chaotic, uh, high VIX environment, which is uh, definitely more likely to lean to an aggressive accelerated crash. And the best time to purchase in any market is when there is terror in the market and there's fear. We're about to see some massive fear is my prediction. Um, and I really do think that uh, you might have an opportunity to buy some stuff at a very good discount. Um, my order of operations is equities crypto. And this is primarily because I've already made plenty of money in crypto. I'm probably a little older than the average viewer here too. Um, so I'm moving a little bit more conservatively. Um, so equities I prefer over crypto now. Uh, not when I was younger. I did it the other way and that's how I got ahead in life. So I'm, I'm okay and understand those of you that do that. Uh, but equities, crypto for me, um, I already have real estate. So that, that part's kind of covered. Um, and then uh, collectibles and stuff of that nature, kind of alternative assets. I am looking at regular um, Bitcoin uh, purchases. I you know the, it doesn't it does use too much energy. That's true, and Ethereum is less energy, um, but it also is something that cannot be replicated very easily and has proven to be independent, non kind of governed, if you will. Um, so. What ends up happening is it's a non-duplicative asset and those are the places you want to be when there are banking struggles and you know aggressive activities of governments and whatnot to um, cool those troubles uh, may may happen that's that's the way i look at it at least and again there is no history book for this there is no answer there's no guidebook a lot of financial situations you can look to history and find an answer there isn't one for this um this has not happened before we are in unprecedented territory and uh, it's getting more chaotic, not less, uh, by the week. And so I really do think we're hitting into an opportunity moment. Um, these are the moments where I have ended up making the most and doing the most um, good for myself and my family, um, just by you know keeping my head in the game, keeping a cool head, and realizing that it will not be the last opportunity and that there's always more opportunities. So like if you miss something, don't sweat it. Don't cry about it. If you buy a little too early and it drops like a rock the next day, don't get upset about it. You just, you say it's fine. It will go up eventually. And you either continue to buy in. This is how I do it. I dollar cost average in. So I'll buy and then it'll go down. I buy again, it'll go down. I buy again, it'll go down. And I just keep doing that the whole time everyone is freaking out um, because what happens is you end up in these accelerant positions, these positions that have a very high opportunity to uh, go very fast upward eventually. Now, that said, I have sat through four-year bear markets in crypto. I have seen uh, things not come back quickly. I suspect this crash will be more of a V-shaped recovery, but that V may be two years, right? One year down, which we've been working on basically the whole year, right? Um, and then turn around one year back towards what was normal before. So we'll see how it goes. Um, can't say that that's, that's guaranteed, obviously. Nothing's guaranteed in markets. There's a lot of players. There's a lot of big money out there. There's a lot of people with positions of power. There's a lot of uh, activity happening to try to you know, prevent the most damage. Uh, how that works is a lot of different opinions and it's difficult to uh, predict how it works, but these tend to be the times where the most opportunity is there. So I am, uh, I am prepared, I am ready. I have cash set aside for all of the asset categories um, sitting in accounts ready to deploy basically instantaneously as things uh, get aggressively um, more and more fearful. Uh, so that's that's my plan. That's where I'm at. And I thought I'd share it with you guys. And I, I don't know for sure that it's going to trigger Monday, but there's several uh, hints that we'll start seeing some of the early pain Monday. Um, it is the early pain. If you think back to the 08 crisis, uh, they basically announced the world was ending from a financial perspective um, in uh, late what was it 2008. I think it was the last quarter. And uh, maybe it was October, November is when we started to see, oh, this is real trouble and it's all coming apart. Uh, banks 
collapsed, etc. And it wasn't until, you know, first quarter 2009, second quarter 2009, when things turned around. But by the time you realize they've turned around, it's too late, which is why I like to buy the whole way down. Um, on the other side of it, and be aware of this, especially if it is a quick drop, um, when everyone dumps in and gets excited about dumping in, that's when you got to start looking to unwind any of the positions that are going to be, you know, aggressive wins because you can, you can exit on a, um, or I end up exiting on the hype cycle of whatever, right? That tends to be the best way to get out. And uh, sometimes that can happen really quickly before it kind of reverts to a meme that isn't nearly as exciting as that first hype cycle. Um, I, I don't know if that's going to happen. I'd say I'd put that at like a 30% chance and you know more 60% of a prolonged thing. I really I expect somewhat of a prolonged pain on this one. Um, so that is my thoughts. Uh, I hope it is helpful. I hope you like the content. I'm sorry my box wasn't that great. Um, I don't really know what to think about this box is probably the worst box second worst box i'm not sure this may be one of the worst stuff boxes I've ever been. <laughs> that's okay it wasn't meant to be a good one it's meant to be background while i chatted with you about the economics that i'm seeing in the world because uh, some of you enjoy this stuff so speaking of that if you enjoy the content uh feel free to join us on patreon the links in the description below we have people in there pretty much all the time talking about all sorts of stuff um, and then, uh, you know, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, all the, all the regular stuff. And, uh, just know I appreciate you. I appreciate interacting with you guys. Uh, the comments have been great. I, I love it. It actually does make me laugh. It entertains me hopefully as much as I entertain you. And, uh, you know, as I said before, not financial advice, just entertainment channel about cards. So I hope you guys have a good one out there. Cracking packs, playing games, enjoying your hobbies, and uh, ready and willing to take advantage of market opportunities as you see them. And uh, stay calm, and hopefully all your, your lives are in order and there's nothing to, to be too fretful about. Uh, until next time, have a good one.